The PMO is one of the most misunderstood departments in an organization. And yes, it's a department. It is a department just like any other department, like you have HR, sales, marketing, engineering, and IT, or any other function. So it's a department that serves a function. Which function? Project management support. Chances are you have a PMO in your organization, or maybe you're looking to set up your own PMO, so you're trying to find out what a PMO is. Or maybe your organization has a PMO that you all have a problem with. When a PMO is bad, everybody hates it and it doesn't last that long. When a PMO is good, then all the PMs love that PMO and all the department heads love that PMO. Why? Because the PMO can help them achieve their goals, their targets, and their strategic objectives. Project managers will do so much better if there's a good PMO operational departments or heads of departments would achieve their targets easier if a PMO is there to support them and help them implement those initiatives that they're working on. And obviously the C-level and you know shareholders, those are gonna be very happy if your projects and initiatives are completed successfully. And a lot of these initiatives could be IT projects or moving projects or construction projects, but you also have the larger scale programs uh, that help grow the, the company's product line or you know expand its strategic reach to different areas or to new target markets. So what is a PMO? A PMO is a department that serves the function of project management. And I say serves because that should be the core of what it does. It's there to help the project managers perform better on their projects so that the organization can get the benefits they expected out of these projects. So why do we need a PMO? A lot of times we don't think we need a PMO because projects are running really well. But are they? Do we have any set expectations about how these projects should have performed? Is there any chance that these projects can be completed in a shorter period of time with less stress, less trouble, less risks, less issues, less changes, and for a lower cost and maybe use fewer resources? Statistics will show you that if you implement a successful PMO, your projects will benefit from it. So then how do PMOs usually start? A lot of times PMOs are started when we have a lot of projects in the organization and we're confused, lost on the priorities and you have the um, different department heads and bosses and clients crying about their projects, asking about when these projects will be completed and we don't have enough resources to manage all of these projects. So then we start playing politics and serve the ones that squeak the loudest. The ones that can affect you the most in your job you know, bosses, uh, those are the ones that we're gonna take care of first because we wanna get rid of that problem. Well, if there was a PMO, then the PMO can take care of that. So usually, when you feel confused, lost on priorities for projects, or the management is starting to ask about what's the status uh, on our projects, how many projects do we have on the way, management wants to have an idea on how many were completed, or, the, or they just wanna know in general how many are in the green doing well, how many are borderline, and how many are suffering uh, uh, project-wise, then that's when you start to think that maybe I need some sort of a, a mechanism to be able to pull all of my projects into some sort of a database and try to make sense out of what's going on on my projects. And, and you may have the feeling that some projects are doing bad because you can't really focus on them and you're losing sight of what's going on. That's when a PMO usually gets started. Other organizations will start a PMO simply because they've heard about it and they know it's a best practice in project management and they want to create one. Sometimes it is the person themselves. So I'm a PM, I'm very successful, I do things well, or maybe I'm a program manager, I have a lot of experience, and I feel that I can add value uh, by creating a PMO because that would help well, maybe help me grow my career, and then I can you know, spotlight all of the performances to my management on reports and so on. So these could be basic needs as to why I wanna start a PMO. I wanna create reports, I wanna tell management how we're performing, I wanna know uh, the loading of my resources, the PMs, and that takes a lot of effort. So that's when you start thinking about, you know, let me go research on what PMOs are and how they are set up. 
So this is why you came to this video, and hopefully here I'm going to add some value to your search. All right, so there are three levels of a PMO. I mean, there could be more, but these are the three core. Number one, which is the lowest level, is a supporting PMO. Okay? What a supporting PMO does is collect information about all the projects that we're running. The PMs could be in different departments. You don't have to be the boss of these PMs. All you're doing is it's similar to a, an administrative role. So what you can do is find out all the projects or initiatives that your organization is working on, small and big. Okay? Put them on a list. Put the name of the PM that is assigned to it. Put the date it started the date it's supposed to finish, the budget uh, allocated to that project, if you know what it is, and the current status of it, okay? Now, the status um, could be taken one more step further uh, to mark the success status. So, the status could be like what's going on with it right now, but I also want to know, is it on track? Is it, you know, is it falling behind? Is it borderline troublesome, right? So, Borderline troublesome is the yellow, doing well or on track is green. Red would be, you know, red is always bad. So the project has problems, okay? It's stalled, it has issues with resources, or there are many changes, or we're stuck with the client, we don't, we don't know where to take this, or things have really evolved into a bad situation. So you have green, yellow, and red. And if you do that at a minimum, and let's say your organization has about 30 projects and you are able to tell your management, your senior management, that this is where we stand. We have five projects in the green doing really well. We have 17 all yellow borderline and then we have eight that are, re that are red. They're not doing well. That's good information if you can consistently provide that on a monthly or weekly or you know, quarterly basis to your senior managers. That's called a supporting PMO. Here you'll notice that you don't really have any authority, all you're doing is collecting information. Now, it would be beneficial for the supporting PMO to have someone who is a, you know, a certified PMP or program manager, someone who knows project management and the tools and so on. So this way, you can run training sessions or maybe you can seek training from the outside for the team of PMs you know, and make sure they have those skills that they need. You could also help them with templates and tools and research um, websites or, you know, solutions um, that are, you know, online solutions or software solutions for the team to use, like Microsoft Project and, you know, Primavera and things like that, things that are similar to that, uh, Monday.com, SharePoint, things like that. So research them, try to see what tools your team can use and explore them yourself and then try them and then bring it over to the team and demonstrate it to them. What you're doing as a supporting PMO is you're adding value, you're supporting your, PM, your PMs in executing on their projects. If you wanna do more of the supporting, you can also do firefighting for them. So when they have a problem with their project, they should be able to call on to you to come and help them solve the issue with that project. All right, so this is the supporting PMO. If you can do this for a while, this is excellent. Maybe do it for about a year, and then you can go to a controlling PMO. You know, if in one year you've been doing well and supporting them, obviously the PMs are going to like you and the departments and, you know, management are going to like you and they would want you to do more. A lot of what you do, uh, a, lot of what, a lot of the tools and templates that you provide and even the advice that you give may not necessarily work out well if the PMs don't want to follow those. But if management wants to ensure that they get the right results, using the advice that you're providing to the PMs, then they empower you to become a controlling PMO. They don't call you a controlling PMO, you just become a controlling PMO in the sense that you can enforce a lot of the tools and templates or procedures or methodologies that the team will follow, that the PMs will follow. So for example, you could mandate that a project needs to have a project charter and it's going to have this format. Uh, and before you can close out your project, we need to see your lessons learned you need to give us a presentation. So as a controlling PMO, you can go one step further and start to mandate the steps. You can enforce the steps that they follow in project management. Mind you, the PMs will still be reporting to whatever departments they belong to. So if you can maintain the controlling, that's the majority of PMOs out there. They stay at the controlling level. If you can do this for a very long time, let's say three, four years, and you're still in the organization, then you can go to a directive PMO. A directive PMO 
takes all the PMs, puts them in the PMO. So the PMO essentially runs the projects. So you no longer have to advise people that belong to other departments. The PMO has the PMs and other resources to manage the project. And that would sometimes be called, you know, that would support a center of excellence or it can be called a center of excellence. That's the highest and I wouldn't really think about it right now. I would stick with, you know, supporting and then move to controlling if I can. So what's the makeup of a PMO? A PMO um, usually would have at least one PM, can have more than one PM who are hopefully certified and know project management. Uh, and they would also have sometimes a business analyst, someone who helps in collecting requirements. You could have an admin, someone who just simply calls like a junior uh, PM officer who simply calls all the PMs and collects information on their projects. You can have a risk analyst who uses a specialized software uh, to analyze the risks of all the projects. You could have a planner scheduler uh, who can plan the projects for every for all the PMs in case the PMs are not trained on them. You could also have a PM, PM trainer and you could be the PM trainer yourself where you conduct these training sessions for the organization. Uh, you may have a uh, program manager sometimes if you, if you have large scale programs or you know initiatives that are bigger than projects, you may have that program manager. So the makeup of it really uh, depends on the organization's structure and size. But at a minimum, at a minimum yourself as a PNP certified project manager who has experience and maybe an assistant, someone to help you follow up with a lot of the uh, project managers. If they are going to be using scheduling, then having a planner scheduler on your team will be beneficial. Um, and preferably someone who also knows risk analysis and the tool to use for risk analysis. That would really be good. The three of you will be the power PMO. You, the admin or maybe junior PMO officer, or just call them PMO officer, and the, uh, the tool guy, all right? T tool person scheduler, planner, risk analyst. Qualifications of a PMO, as I mentioned, you should be PMP certified just for the credibility. And if you can do a little bit more, go to program management certification, the PGMP from PMI, that would be excellent. How do you set up a PMO? Well, that's a very long story. And that's the consultancy that I provide. I'll, I'll put an email for how you can reach our organization. We provide consultancy and training in PMO setups and we might be able to help you out. That's all I have for now. My name is Edward Shahab. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care, bye-bye.